Hey guys, good morning. Today I'm out in the flower garden and we are gonna be planting up hundreds, like 1,200 bulbs and dahlias and all kinds of good stuff today. There was a huge sale at my wholesaler. Um, so I wanted to take you guys along, show you how I'm planting, give you some tips if you're also looking at planting dahlias or lilies. And today I wanted to talk too a little bit more about what got me started with flower farming and my whole like quarantine hobby here with with farming flowers I know a lot of people have dove into different hobbies and things during quarantine to just stay mentally well you know and stay focused and positive and today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. So they're an online therapy platform where you can get connected with a therapist that is specifically going to help you with your goals in therapy. We'll talk a little bit more about them later as well as sort of mental health and how I feel like my flowers and this whole, <laughs> we have two roosters now you guys, they are a little bit out of tune, <laughs> they're still young. Um, but I just think that, you know, when you really dive into a hobby and you find something that you love, and you're passionate about, if you can combine that with being able to share them with others, share that hobby with others, and then also if you can make you know, a living off of doing it, you should totally pursue it. So before I get any further into that whole topic, I wanna show you guys these crates of bulbs. I've got literally like, I think 1100 lily bulbs and like about 100 dahlia bulbs. Oh, and then I also got some bare roots for salvia. Lots of stuff. Okay, they're in the back of the truck. Let me show you what I got. Okay, <laughs> here are the bulbs. So like this crate here, this is 300 lily bulbs. And these are the courier, carrier? Courier lilies. Then I've got starfighters over there. Those are so pretty. I, I know they're a little bit shorter than like the stargazer lilies. They're supposed to be a little shorter, but they're really similar. And then here, see these are tressors. These are an Asiatic lily. Honestly, there is a lot here and it's starting to get really sunny. So I'm <laughs> kind of concerned about how hot it's going to be while I'm doing all the planting. Not for the bulbs, like they'll be fine, but like for me, it's gonna be hot. So, okay, we have the Tresser lilies. These are a, like a bright tangerine orange and they're the Asiatic lilies. So those guys we're gonna plant like four inches down. Oriental lilies will plant like six inches down. So I've got the dahlias, I've got the white anestas and there's 70 of those. I wanna say they're like a decorative, maybe a water lily, I can't remember, but they're a white and they've got like almost a lime green in the middle. I'll put, I'll put some pictures up here, but that's the white onesta. I am a dahlia lover. We have a really short season up here, so I'm kind of nervous about like how well they're gonna do. Like, I feel like we're gonna get a frost and it's just gonna kill them off when they're in their prime. But I, I'm, I'm almost certain that they will flower because we do get some hot, hot sunny weather and I'm planting them in full sun. So I think they're gonna do good. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? Oh, the red caps. I've got 30 red cap dahlias. These guys are a small, like a ball shape um, and they are, they're good for bouquets. Like they're not gonna be a huge dinner plate dahlia that like would basically take up your entire market bouquet and be really fragile. These guys are a little bit more sturdy. Oh, these are the Siberia. These guys are an oriental lily. They're white, really pretty. Let's see, that was 100. These are 200 more of the Siberia. Ugh. Okay, and then we've got salvia. So I got 25 uh, Snow Hill salvia roots. And these guys are like a really pretty white. Let's see, what are these? red twins another asiatic lily got a hundred of those these guys are really bright deep red and that's all just you know like 1200 plants no big deal uh, i'm looking at this little bit of shade that i have as it's like quickly dwindling i'm gonna go ahead and carry all of these crates over to where we're gonna be planting and i'll meet you there okay i'm just about to get digging here i've got my shovel i like this little shorty razorback is the brand i like because i can just kind of step on it and it's like right like good, good ergonomics. So while I'm digging, I thought this would be a good time kind of to talk about, you know, or quarantine, hobbies, mental health, and kind of how I've been dealing with basically living in a one bedroom house all winter up in the mountains and staying positive through quarantine. And you know, everybody has their own unique situation with, whoop, with how everything's been going and it's been hard on a lot of people. Um, today's sponsor, BetterHelp, they reached out to me about um, just kind of trying their online therapy. And we already have, you know, one of one in our family already goes to therapy just to kind of learn some like calming techniques. And some of us just tend to struggle 
a little bit more than others with um, like emotions and controlling emotions and learning how to like deal with anxiety. Well, for me, anxiety. Um, but I think if you struggle with things like that, it's good to see a therapist. It's good to get the tools that will help you to be happy and to be, you know, the most successful you that you can be. Um, better help is all about connecting you with a, a licensed therapist who can help you with your specific goals. So whether, for me, I tried out their service and it's really neat because I can just text my therapist from my phone. And it's not just, you know, it's not like a crisis line or like a, you know, help me. It's not like a 911 call. <laughs> it's actual therapy with a licensed therapist. So she's able to help you tackle your goals. Like for me, anxiety just tends to creep up. And I know a lot of times I get kind of over, over book myself, like I do too much. Um, but having somebody who can act almost like a life coach, like helping me refocus, that's my personal goal with therapy. Ooh, I found some, some tulip bulbs. Um, so I just, I wanna encourage you, if you feel like you are someone who is struggling a bit, it can be in many different areas, whether that be depression, overall happiness, motivation, relationship issues, even for teenagers, I would recommend going in. You can do a quiz and get matched with a therapist that can target your specific goals, which is also nice because a lot of times therapists in your area might not, you know, they might be more into family counseling or they might not be specific for you what you have access to locally. Plus you don't have to go into an awkward waiting room. <laughs> oh, and I don't think I mentioned it, but you can also do like live web chats. I like the text version um, because I can just, you know, sign in with my pin and I can just text her at any time of the day. You can schedule video chats and stuff like that too if you prefer the in-person, you know, like real-time one-on-one. But I've just found it really helpful. So I'll put a link down below. It's www.betterhelphelp.com um, and you guys can check it out. You can also get a coupon for 10% off your first month. Okay, let's get to digging. We're gonna do some sped up because I'm not gonna be able to do this if I'm talking the whole time. some flowers so I would just do a whole trench and then come through and put all the flowers in and like perfectly sprinkle all of this compost right however I can't because my wheelbarrow can only fill so much so we're gonna go ahead and get started with the starfighter lilies bust into here Ooh, I hope I'm not cooking these guys it's pretty hot out it says 300 in this crate well this this soil is very hot but roots are looking good and there's some deeper in the soil too so if we lose any it might be like the five on the top so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plant them you know root side down so pointy side up and then i'm just gonna space these guys about nine inches apart you can see you know once they're growing give them a good amount of space so you can still get airflow in there and that they can you know make their lilies their buds and still have room Maybe a little bit further <laughs> apart. So I'm gonna get to planting these. And here's just a quick uh, recap of what the starfighter lilies look like. Just a quick picture if you guys wanted to see them. Let's do this. gardening and planting like what makes this therapeutic for me 
is like getting in the dirt. Like as you can see, like my knees are in the dirt, my hands are in the dirt, I'm wiping dirt on my face. Like for me, there's just something about being able to connect, you know, with nature, like in its most, like, <laughs> it's like a simplest form, you know what I mean? Like I'm connecting with the soil that's growing my plants that I'm either gonna put on my table or eat. Um, it's just, it's so relaxing to me, just getting out here and getting messy. I know everybody has a different, like for some people, digging around in the dirt is gonna be like their worst nightmare. But for me, it just makes me feel so connected to like my, like where I live and the food that I eat. And it's like, there's nothing better. So I just love it. I got, my kiddos are out here too. I don't know if you guys can see them. They're coming, <laughs> so they're gonna help me plant too, which another thing is like so exciting to me is being able to share this with like the next generation, you know, my children to show them where these things are from. They're not just things you go to the store and buy in plastic, you know, these came from the ground. Like dirt is good for us and we have to, we have to replenish the soil and we have to take care of what we have and I'm in my happy place. <laughs> about this soil in particular and what's gonna make it just absolutely ideal for planting, well, planting whatever, but the lily bulbs will love it too, is I amended this soil in the fall. So I added like fresh, not fresh, but <laughs> like nine month old cow manure and compost, like some local compost. It's a mix of uh, like fruit tree compost and all that that's finished. So probably about a year old. I put that on the soil and then that was in the fall then we planted tulips into it so we have had you know there's been roots and life going on in this soil and then I pulled this spring I pulled the, the tulip bulbs out so by the bulb at least most of the bulbs I'm still finding some of them but I pulled the flowers this spring for us up here that's like April and May you want to come in here and help dig sure. I brought my Good, this will help. Ooh, this is a really great tool. I forget what they call these. This is an excellent tool for this because you can just kind of like hack in here and dig. It's so good for weeding too. Um, so we pulled out the tulip bulbs. You wanna come around here, buddy? And you can help me lay in the bulbs. Sure. Like right, you know, right here. So for us, uh, spring is like May for tulips. And there's all this activity, you know, in the soil, keeping it alive, keeping the the whole soil web, the food web under there going. So best soil you can plant in is, you know, it has good organic matter. So it's got the, it has the compost that's been in, into the soil attracting worms and uh, it's had the manure. So it's got all the good stuff for growing. What's that? That's a lily bulb I just planted. Uh -huh. so we're gonna plant more coming this way. And then having had roots in here just a month ago, the soil is like, it's just ideal. So I'm really excited to be wolf? planting in here. I think that, nope. Some of these are rocks. If we find rocks, let's toss them out. <laughs> so let's just kind of make this a little bit flat. We want to go about six inches down. See here, about six inches. Is this six inches? I think so. And then we'll start laying in more of our lily bulbs. I think the biggest mistake, at least one of them, that I made as a novice gardener, like back when I was just doing it for fun and doing like a veggie garden in the summer, it was just planting one thing for the, you know, one growing season, like only for the, the warm season annuals. It would be like, 
you know, I was just gonna plant all at the same time and it was tomatoes and it was zucchini and green beans and just those few things. And the ground was really only active during that time. Once I started actually like realizing some sunflowers can be planted in the fall, winter over, and then bloom in the spring really early, uh, it kind of opened my eyes to how many options there are for flowers and how much really that you can grow. Also like keeping your soil active and, and moving all the time is important. Plus mulching, mulching is so important. Back behind me you see the landscape fabric. So this is you know a fabric mulch, but straw. When I'm not using my tomato beds for planting, you need to have something protecting the soil life and keeping everything active. So just throwing you know old chicken bedding over the top of that while you're not using it keeps everything active. And it also helps the soil from being depleted from like humus and moisture and then getting really compact by the time you're going to work it. If you can like not disturb the soil, that's ideal. Okay guys, are we ready to plant? We need to get some bulbs. They're right behind you in that crate. So we're gonna go ahead and set them in. We'll do kind of like a grid every nine inches and we're gonna stagger them kind of like one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, like an egg carton. So Cameron, go ahead and put your first one. Perfect, so we'll do pointy side up. Okay. There we go. And then the next one can go like here. And then the next one there, you wanna do some, Kaylee? There you go. And then the root side down, perfect. You got it. Inside, taking a minute to cool down get some water <sighs> hot out there I think we're planning on getting in the pool in a little bit because when you're hot and sweaty there's nothing better than just jumping in the pool and you're instantly <laughs> better um, we're about we're not even a quarter of the way done with the lilies I think what I'm gonna do is actually plant some in a trench where I would normally be doing the dahlias and just like hope for the best as far as the deer not eating them because eventually we are gonna have the property fenced and oh there's another thing i want to talk to you guys about which is sort of the future of our flower farm and like what's coming next so long story short a local friend of ours said hey have you ever thought about growing on anybody else's property like flower farming on someone else's land and i was like no but like what are you talking about <laughs> so anyways they have like a airbnb kind of thing and they're looking for somebody who could grow flowers on their land and so I'm like, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna go check that out tomorrow morning and see maybe if it's a viable option. But I'm thinking with all these lilies I have, that might be a good idea to do like lilies over there. Cause I don't think they have the same kind of deer pressure we have. They're not, they're not like right up against the forest where they're at. So we might need to save some of the lilies for them. I think too, like we're talking about mental health today. This is like something that I so enjoy doing and being able to like have the kids involved, have them planting with me and being able to like do a swim day, you know, like be really hot and actually get in the water, actually play with them and actually like, you know, I'm teaching my five-year-old how to swim now. So we're actually able to do things together as a family. Cameron actually just planted, how many? Um, like 200? 300 sunflower, purple sunflowers. Did you do the red ones yet? Not yet, there's six of them. So that's gonna be fun. He planted them himself, he dug the trenches. Did you cover them over the t over top too? I covered um, one row and I started like, this much on the one row, another row. Cool, so that'll be fun. Like he's, he's planting them himself and then we'll be able to watch them grow and we'll be able to see, you know, I have all this dirt right here. We'll be able to see like what come harvest time, you know, we can all work together and maybe even sell some of your flowers at the market. Would you want to do that? 
Uh -huh. Make some, make <laughs> some money, little summer. 300 sunflowers is a lot of money. Summer job. <laughs> good idea. So not only is it something fun to do as a family, but it's also a good, you know, like a hard working summer job too. I realized we've been out there planting and it's already after one. So I'm working on some lunch for the kids. I thought I would just share a quick, easy meal for the summertime. Watermelon, perfect side. It's almost like a dessert. Um, and then I'm doing some local sausage. We get it from another vendor at the farmer's market. Some pasta. I got it from Costco. It's called Garolago. I don't know. It says authentic Italian, made in Italy. And then a really, really good way to make a quick sauce that actually is like authentic Italian is this. So it's, I don't know, pommy, pommy. It's also made in Italy. And these are tomatoes that are never frozen. So fresh Italian tomatoes grown in Italy, processed in Italy. And this is actually the brand that they used when we went to Italy and we did like an Airbnb experience with uh, just a local Italian that did a pasta making class. So he said he liked this, so I keep getting it. They have it at like Fred Meyer here locally. So I just took this, put it in a pot with a bunch of the sausage, some herbs, salt, pepper, boiling up the pasta, quick and easy meal. So I just came in from the pool with the kids. I thought I would go ahead and end the vlog here. I do have to prep bouquets for tomorrow for the market. And I hope you guys have enjoyed coming along with me and getting to share in some of this planning and the planting of the flower farm. I know I'm like having so much fun with it and I hope you guys are enjoying kind of the behind the scenes before all of the big blooms because I know as we get into July and August, we're just gonna be like drowning in dahlias. At least that's my hope. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys soon. Bye guys.